everyone. Welcome to Backstory Sessions. I'm your host, Matt. We hope you enjoy this episode. episode of Backstory Sessions. I am joined today by my co-host, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Kat. Hey, everyone. How are you? Happy Halloween. Yes, happy Halloween. It is uh, uh, almost Halloween, I think, isn't it? A couple of days. Yeah, yeah. I, you saw, know, but... I was out driving around today and uh, saw kids out trick-or-treating. Lots of them. So, I guess uh, yeah, I some people. The weather is supposed to take a strange turn um, for Halloween. And uh, I think a lot of people were out doing their trick or treating this weekend. Yeah, I guess different places do it on different days or whatever. So, I know uh, here we're supposed to get um, rain and possibly snow on Halloween. You know, that's just so unbelievable to me, but, uh, you know, Rish Allen, our um, guest from last season, um, she posted, like, snow pictures of, uh, you know, look like four or five inches at least, so. um, Yeah, she's out, where is she, Iowa or something? North Dakota or South Dakota. Mm. I think north, but anyways, one of the Dakotas, and, uh. I just, uh, I'm not in that mindset for snow. Yeah, it's a little too early for that. Yeah, I mean, fall just got here. Yeah. So, you know, along with fall comes, like, the fall foods. And I know we were talking earlier about pumpkin chili. and. That's right. going to be chilly, you know, chilly weather, I guess. Yeah, it will be. It was, uh. Well, yesterday, I think it was in the 70s here. Here as well. Um, today was also warm here. Yeah, not here. Today was raining. So. Uh, but however, tomorrow is supposed to be a little different story. Dropping to the 50s, I believe. And, uh, yeah, and that's great. your update on the weather. <laughs> Let's talk yeah. about the podcast. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, we, we give you what you need. That's so. true, yeah. And I know, well, so some things that you need, um, you know, tips for trick-or-treating, um, candy and all that is, um, I don't know, do you, like, do you ever, did you ever, like, go trick-or-treating and get, like, something besides candy? You know, do people give out, like, I know these, like, one community they used to give out like a penny or a, you know like a coin of some kind yeah i've gotten that before yeah um that's of course back when like that was worth something mm, right yeah <laughs> I, so i will say have you noticed the price of candy um it has increased like incredibly um, a lot. I haven't bought any recently, so I can't say. Well, um, I did, uh, and okay, so Mystery Meat, uh, we have completed now, as of today, our Halloween show. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things we did was a treat bag um, theater, mystery theater. And so, um, bought a lot of candy and different things to put in the treat bag. Mm. And uh, so, I noticed that, um, you know, I don't know if it's because of Halloween or if it's just uh, one of those things, you know, like you notice certain grocery items just like going up a dollar or something like, you know, that every, within a week, the yeah. price gets that much. Yeah. I heard some things you had to buy twice. 
Well, um, you know, I just don't know, but it's, um, it's shocking to me. And so I, um, I hope all the (laughs) out there, I hope they get like all good things and, uh, just enjoy that. Uh, I did you dress up in a costume, or do you have plans to? Uh, today, no. Well, what about on Halloween? No. Yeah, you know, because you you would be so like I could like think of so. I I think you would make a great vampire. Like that's mm, just no. Yeah, I think you would. Yeah. But you know, there's other things as well, but um. I did dress up as a cat. Um, <laughs> you did today? Uh, no, not today. No. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, uh, it was at the beginning of Mystery Mates. So oh, when we did oh. Halloween, uh, our first Halloween performance, I did dress up as a cat. And, um, you know, it was well received. So I believe today is National Cat Day. Oh, man. Well... I should have, like, dressed up in the cat costume yeah, today, see. but... Yeah, you missed it. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, you know, I in spirit, um, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, kind of there in spirit. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of spirit, <laughs> uh, you know, our episode's going to be focused on that today. Um, we uh, have, in the past, talked to Waverly uh, Hills. Right, yeah. And uh, we tried typically to do around Halloween some, um, you know, paranormal, haunted, supposedly haunted um, attraction. And, um, you know, this time we have a lighthouse. Of all things. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it was good enough for Scooby-Doo, so it's good enough for us. Well, I mean, lighthouses are like the sappiest, you know, most romantic things in the world. And to think of one being haunted is like, I don't know, a little bit hard for me. I mean, Um, usually they are haunted or there's some creepy lighthouse keeper or... You know, he goes crazy after a few years of being in the lighthouse alone and just, like, disappears one day and well, run, I mean, runs amok in the town or whatever. There's no reason for someone to be alone in a lighthouse because, like I was saying, it's, it's a romantic, sappy, all you have to do is, like, place some kind of ad, you know, dating profile thing, like, <laughs> lonely lighthouse, you know, keeper, yeah. seeking, you know, like-minded, romantic, and, you know, you wouldn't be alone. Yep. So, um, but in general, like, the ocean and all of that are it's very, you know, highly romantic and positive and I don't think about the hauntings and that side of it. However, you know, you were the one that pointed out this um, particular lighthouse. So, I don't know, had you, like, have you been there or is... No, I I haven't been there. I was reading about it somewhere. I don't remember where, but... Yeah. Well, so we, you know, we've contacted them. We've done our research and... uh, we're going to have a guest today who works there and, um, you know, has seen these firsthand accounts, according to um, what I'm told um, before we do the interview, uh, <laughs> that, um, you know, she's experienced things. And we've had other guests that talk about similar things where they've seen, you know, like shadow. Right. Uh, people or footprints or yeah somebody somebody we talked to had a live-in ghost or something yeah michael right yeah yeah friendly he was friendly ghost and then we did that one uh with the 
they were shooting a movie in a haunted house or something. Yep. In Savannah uh, yeah. or whatever. Savannah. That was in Savannah, Georgia. Yep. yep. So one of the most haunted places, apparently. Um, apparently, the so lighthouse I, is too. Well, um, it seems like uh, a lot of people go seeking out during Halloween. Like, they'll go to Salem, for instance. Right. Um, or these places that are supposedly haunted. Um, you know, for me, like, I don't want to see any paranormal things or... So, I, I would say far away from those places. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've never... I, I guess, like, people always talk about that they don't feel afraid um i they like just coexist um yeah i guess but you know i'm just not there like um if yeah. i started seeing things <laughs> i'm sure like the first you know first time something happened it's like hmm well that's interesting and then after that it's like well what the hell is that and yeah. finally, you know, at some point, you're just like, oh, that's, you know, so-and-so or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's Michael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, if you, um, you know, like, so you did actually, you know, move to a new place this year. Yep. Um, would, you know, if... if you started hearing and seeing things or, you know, like things being thrown off the wall at you or whatever. I mean, would it, like, would you want to move or? Like, yeah, I might, I might consider, reconsider my uh, living arrangement. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, this is really interesting to me. It's fascinating. Like, so I'll say, you know, I am a skeptic. I've said it before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I, we had a poll question in our backstory group about, you know, if somebody, your significant other, spouse, or whatever, um, told you that they saw a ghost or they saw some paranormal something, like, would you believe them? Um, me personally? Probably not. Yeah. Um, so I, I would believe that. Um, they thought they, you know, I, I would believe that they actually thought that happened. So I wouldn't necessarily think they were lying. Um, but I would think that what they saw was probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, because you'd have no reason to lie to me if, if you said, you know, cat, I, right. you know, saw a ghost in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, I would probably laugh just like I just did at first. <laughs> Be like, you know, you're gonna tell me a punchline or something. <coughs> yeah. But if you remain serious about it, you know, then I'd probably be like, okay, you know, I need you to pull over. And <laughs> mm. let's, I have you know, some Jello for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's like talk about what's really going on here or something. Mm. So, you know, I. I mean, do you find it intriguing that the like the whole possibility that uh, Yeah, I mean there's lots of things that can't be explained like you were saying. Um, you know, there's lots of things that there just so there just is no explanation for. Yeah. So, it's like aliens. I mean, just a lot of stuff out there. So, I'm not saying whether I believe them or believe in them or not. I'm just saying that there's a lot of things that can't be explained away. Like yeah. A weather balloon or whatever. And you know, and sometimes like you know, eventually technology enables us to find out things. Um and so then we have more knowledge and know what it was that we Yeah. Didn't sure. Understand. So, yeah. you know, I guess I'm more of that kind of thought is that, 
you know, we just don't know yet, but that doesn't mean just because we don't know that it's a paranormal. True. To, I guess. Yeah, but, I mean, it could be. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess because it's like, why is everybody not one, you know? Like, why do only some people um, come back and some don't? Or, or is everybody back and just, like, quiet and some people are, like... Don't know. You know, monsters. <laughs> don't have an answer for you. Well, I don't know, but if I come back, you know, I'm going to make some noise. I'm going to throw some things. <laughs> or, I mean, you can learn, <laughs> uh, you know, like just listening. <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. Well, who's our guest? Um... So, Abby's our guest, and uh, she works at the Lighthouse and has. You know, we're going to ask her for how long, but um, I'll be curious to um, see if she's like, does she have these experiences, you know, when she's not at work? Right, yeah. Things like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just going to be fascinating. She's um, she's agreed to be very open with us about, you know, this is, it's a, uh, so I would say these in some ways these interviews are like a little harder to do because like you don't want to be patronizing or something to the guests and be like right okay well you know i think that's like not true or right. whatever i have jello for you <laughs> yeah so i you know i want to listen like respectfully and and ask questions the same way but also you know like get to to ask the questions like the one of, you know, why are some, only some people coming back as spirits? And right. do you ever see things outside of this one particular place? And, you know, just stuff like that. So, but she's, you know, very open to that. And I'm sure we're not the only people that ask those kinds of questions or at least think them. Right. Now, you know, I, I think you could be like a complete skeptic and not like be open to any possibility, or you could be a person that like believes every single thing with like, you know, like, like, uh, <laughs> the wind blows. Okay. Well, that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's a uh, great grandmother. <laughs> right. Yeah whatever you know so i mean uh or you you could be somewhere on that spectrum in between and you know i i'm kind of more a middle ground kind of person so i would say i am too well yeah let's talk to abby is that her name abby yeah and let's see what she uh you know where does she fit on the spectrum all right, so Abby is from the St. Augustine Lighthouse in Florida. Yes, and uh, we are so excited to uh, find out all about her experiences firsthand. All right, well, let's talk to her. Abby, I want to welcome you to this episode of Backstory Sessions. We're so excited to have you as a guest today. I'm very excited to be joining you guys today to talk about this. Well, this is a fascinating topic with, um, you know, October and a Halloween season upon us. Um, I guess it comes to my mind more often during uh, this season than any other time. However, um, I guess if you work in a job such as you do, that um, this is a year-round kind of um, experience? Yes, for sure. Um, I kind of get to experience spooky season every day that I work, so five nights a week, uh, 52 weeks a year. And so we... Um, you are the specialty programs manager for the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Yes. And yes. this lighthouse 
um, is haunted. Very much so, yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. So let's first like get a little information about you. So how long have you worked there? So I've been working at the lighthouse for almost two and a half years now. Um, and I've been doing the ghost tours for pretty much the entire time that I've been there. And, and so when you say do the ghost tour, um, what does that entail? So we have our own tour that we run at the lighthouse. We have a few options. Um, so I can do everything from telling everybody the history, the experiences, things to look out from, and including um, helping people actually investigate on our grounds and like trying to communicate with our spirits, get in touch with them. And I do have interactions with them on occasions. Okay, well, before that you were working there, um, had you had any paranormal experiences? So I have. Um, I've always been a very, like, firm believer in ghosts. My stepdad grew up watching the paranormal TV shows. My grandmother grew up watching them. So I've always loved, like, spooky stuff and horror movies and everything like that. Um, and my senior trip in high school, we went to Charleston. South Carolina, which, as you might know, is one of the most haunted cities in the United States. In um, Savannah and, as well, apparently. So Yes. And one of my first um, experiences I love to talk about was we went on a graveyard tour, and they told us about how this woman, her, she unfortunately lost her baby, um, and so she walks around the graveyard every night and, like, sits over her baby's grave because um, she passed away shortly before the baby did. And I actually have a picture on my phone of a woman's face in between the rails of the graveyard. Oh, wow. And so this is when you were in high school, did you say? Or Yep, so this was actually about a decade ago that this happened. Okay. And, I, I mean, did were other people, like, seeing the same thing or capturing photos no one else got pictures that night except for me and i was so excited because i was the only person who came away from that entire tour with like those pictures but i also don't know how many of like my class was actually going to take it seriously because i mean when you're in high school obviously we're all teenagers we're joking around we're trying to have fun with it but i was like no i want this to happen Wow. And so when it did happen, I mean, were you taken back a little or you were so excited or what What did you I, feel? I was, I was very excited um, just because I was like, oh, this is like concrete proof that there is life after death. Um, and so for me, I was like, this is amazing. It's still, I still have this picture on my phone to this day that I go around and I always show people like, this was my first ghost experience. Like, this is what really got me into the paranormal. So when other people look at it, do they ever say like, okay, well, you know, that could be something else? Oh, for sure. There's always our skeptics out there. Um, I, I won't lie. I'm married to one of them. My husband I will sit there. He'll be like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But when I do find people who are also believers, they're like, that's really neat. Like, that story is really interesting. But, I mean, even the place that I took it at, they don't want people to believe that there's ghosts there. They actually have a sign outside of it that says the only ghost here is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, that's pretty to the point there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, is it bad for tourism or, like... Um, why would they not want it to be haunted? Um, so it was a church graveyard. So I don't know if they just didn't appreciate people coming there and like constantly wanting to be there and like look for spirits or what exactly the case was. Um, I just know that that was the sign that they had there. But I mean, there are some places who don't want all this publicity and all these tourists to come through because sometimes you do get people who don't necessarily have the right intentions and when they're trying to look for spirits. Um, and then you just have people who are just completely disrespectful of property. So I, I'm sure for them with being a church, they want people to kind of respect the area and respect the history. And especially well, with it being a graveyard. 
Uh, it's very interesting to me that you said you're married to a skeptic. So, you know, how, how does that work? Like, are you generally like a believer of a lot of things without, you know, conventional evidence, we'll say. And then your husband or spouses, um, you know, I have to have like, what, what more would he need or to believe? Yeah. So I think for him, I think the fact that there's not like concrete evidence, like one of my favorite things I tell people is my husband, believe it or not, still believes the Megalodon exists. Um, but he's like, well, we have all these fossils, like we're still finding these things. What's to say that it's not still out there? And I'm like, okay, well with ghosts, like we are able to communicate with them. Like I've had way too many experiences that I have not been able to explain that I'm like, there's no other reason for this happening other than this, this is something paranormal. Yeah, well, um, not concrete. <laughs> you know, it, it's quite interesting, and especially to have uh, both of you, you know, with uh, very different viewpoints there. Um, it's so the lighthouse, it seems like, would be a perfect job for you. Um, what's the history of it? Tell us a little bit about the lighthouse. Yeah, so the current lighthouse that's standing um, was built in eight, or they started construction on it in 1871, and they finished in 1874. It was lit in October of 1874, so next year is actually going to be our 150th anniversary. Wow. Um, and it is, yeah, it, um, it's built out of brick and steel, and it was kind of um, built with stuff from the north and south because it was a union after the civil war to show that two countries could come back together to form one um which is one of my favorite facts about it uh, is that it was supposed to be a unionizing landmark um and it still stands watch over the city of saint augustine we are still an active lighthouse to this day um we it was run by the coast guard for a little while uh and then they kind of handed it over to us said hey you take care of it um, you guys can have it. So we are a nonprofit uh, lighthouse um, that we have daily admission tours to and nightly tours. So when I think of lighthouses, I, you know, I think of them for a totally different reason. Like to me, they're like highly romantic and beautiful. And, you know, the thoughts of like going to one when I see them, it's always like more of a romantic um, idea, I guess. So when I first was, when we were talking about this episode and, you know, what places that we might uh, explore this topic with, Matt is the one that um, suggested this lighthouse. And I'm like, a lighthouse? You know, how on earth could that be haunted? Because, you know, that's romantic. Um, is this, so how is it that a lighthouse, like, uh, do people died there? Or, you know, I mean, what's the history of the spirits that could be there? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I we have a lot of different spirits. So we have confirmed anywhere between about seven to nine spirits um but we have been told by different groups that have come through that we generally have anywhere of actually up to 20 plus uh and some of our spirits backstories range from tragic accidents that occurred during construction spirits that weren't even associated with our lighthouse the active standing one um but the original saint augustine lighthouse um, and then we have former lighthouse keepers who actually didn't even pass away on property. And then some of our spirits, we actually have no idea who we are, who they are, um, but we get steady activity from them. So we've just kind of taken them in and tell their story. So what types of um, ways do they manifest or communicate so if i'm there like what would be something to let me know that you know whoever is there with me Ooh, yes so we have a wide variety because all of our spirits have different ways of presenting themselves 
Um, okay. So uh, I'll start off with one of our most well-known ones, the ones that really put us on the map for paranormal um and that is our shadow man now he's the one we don't know who he is i don't know if you've ever seen the ghost hunters episode uh that they did at our lighthouse but they had been there multiple times but the first time was in 2006 and they caught a figure running up the steps of the lighthouse when there was no one else in there but them uh, no matter how quick they made it up though they were never able to catch up with him and they made it to the top motion sensor light clicked on nobody was there now, our shadow man just kind of likes to kind of peer over the edge, leaning down, looking at people. And um, sometimes he'll open the windows up on us in the lighthouse. We are climbing down or climbing up. He also has a tendency to run past people when we're on our tour or even run ahead of people to get up to the top of the lighthouse. We've often had guests make it all the way to the top and look at our tour guides and go, oh, where's the person that we just followed up? And they're, our tour guides are like, what do you mean? You're the first person up here. And they're like, no, we followed a figure up the lighthouse. And they're like, no, you are our first people that we have ever had up here tonight. So he has a way of manifesting himself as just a, a shadowy figure that kind of hangs out in our lighthouse. Okay, and so... <laughs> Um, that isn't scary to you, like, oh, you know. um, <laughs> so I'm actually, I joke around, I'm the most terrified tour guide who works the tours. <laughs> uh, I love my job 100%, um, but whenever anything happens to me, it actually, in the moment, really freaks me out. I actually ran out of the building mid-tour the other week. Um, something I'm like openly willing to admit and say I've never done that before until that night. Um, but I love the experiences afterwards. Like they're great because it gives me more of a way to like tell people like, hey, they're still active with us. They're here. We love to know that they're here. It's just in the moment when you're not expecting something to happen and then all of a sudden, you know, like a window flies open on you. It's a little terrifying. Um, so what was it that made you um, run out? Yes, so that would be another one of our spirits that we have. Um, his name is Peter Rasmussen. He was our longest serving lightkeeper. He served from 1901 to 1924. Um, served at many lighthouses before ours. He was known as a very social man to the locals, but he could not stand tourists. Um, now, his wife, Lula, passed away in the House of Natural Causes. Um, he eventually moved away from the lighthouse um, and passed away uh, about a year later in 1925 in the city of St. Augustine. He's actually buried downtown. But he's returned to us. Now, some experiences with Peter dep vary depending on who you are, but our most common interaction with him is actually the scent of cherry pipe tobacco. Uh, we had him, he would smoke it all the time while he was there. It's his way of calming down from having to give tourists um, tours all day because that was actually a job of a lighthouse keeper. Other than taking care of the lighthouse and tending to the ground, you had to be a tour guide. Um, and Peter, I think, just wanted to take care of the lighthouse. He didn't really want to be a tour guide, so his wife stepped in a lot. Um, so he would smoke his cherry pipe tobacco at the end of the day. So we often get re um, reports of it in our basement and at the top of our lighthouse where he likes to hang out. But interactions do sometimes get to be a little bit more physical with Peter. Um, I always tell people, Peter is not particularly fond of men. So if men are wearing a hat in the basement, sometimes their hats have been knocked off of their head and flung across the room. <laughs> I'd love yeah. for that and Matt, um, I would love to see that happen to you. I haven't, but I can only imagine seeing that happen. I generally, when I say that, all the men take their hats off and they're like, I'm good. And I'm like, this is how I know that y'all aren't truly like all these tough macho men that you say you are. Um, we also have two chairs in the basement that Peter is very fond of. We don't know why they're two chairs like that we got in the 90s, like something everyone probably had in their homes or schools growing up. But Peter loves those chairs. And sometimes when men sit in them, uh, they get this sensation that they're being pinched, poked, prodded. I had a gentleman get a slap in the rib cage. Some yes. men feel pressure on their chest, pressure on their shoulders, as if to say, get out. Um, and some actually have um, very 
not hostile interactions, but aggressive interactions with Peter because he's not very fond of them. Mm. Now, women, on the other hand, get a completely different interaction from Peter. Peter <laughs> really likes women, especially blondes. Um, so sometimes when we go into the basement, we'll feel gentle touches on our arms. Uh, we'll get our hair tucked behind our ear. Hair ties have been known to pull out. He's been known to get back massages on occasion. I haven't been lucky enough to receive one of those yet, but it would be nice <laughs> at some point. Um, and then Peter's favorite thing to do, though, with ladies is I like to say that he's a legs man. So he loves to run his hand up and down the side of women's legs. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I ran out was I we have a smaller version of our tour that we do called Ghost Tales, which we do um, during the week. And it's just we give the stories kind of like what I'm telling you guys now. And I was in the basement, which I don't go into by myself. I am also terrified of the dark. It gets really dark down there. And it's just kind of creepy when you're down there by yourself. Any staff member will say the basement is actually really creepy. So I'm standing there and I'm telling my stories just like I normally do when all of a sudden I just feel something inhale and exhale right on the side of my face. And I was like, okay, I'm going to continue on. It's going to be fine. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain picking up in the background now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay for audio? Yeah, you're good. Okay, perfect. So continued on with my story. And then all of a sudden, I feel a hand, a cold hand, run along the side of my arm. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Mm. So I moved to a different area. And I started feeling like a tingling sensation around my legs, which generally we describe being touched as a tingling sensation, a cold sensation. Or for women, you know, like when you have a hair stuck on you and you just can't figure out where it is and it just keeps rubbing up against your arm. Mm -hmm. One of those. So I keep feeling this tingling on my legs, and I'm like, okay, let me finish up my story. And we moved over to what we call Peter's room, which is where he hangs out the most in the basement. And another woman sat down in her, his chairs, and she was absolutely terrified of the ghost. And I hadn't even told her about the chairs yet. And I was like, well, we have a small group. I feel like I need to sit down with her, because if she's terrified, i got to be terrified, too. Hmm. So I sat down with her, and after working on my story, I felt a cold hand just go on the side of my leg. And I was like, all right, let's keep moving. <laughs> and continued on with my story, and I looked at my other tour guide at one point, and I was like, John, the room is much quieter than it normally is. Like, you know, like when the quiet just gets deafening, even right. though there's normally noise going on, things like that. So definitely quiet. It was way out of normal like we weren't used to it and right as i was getting ready to talk about peter touching women's legs we had a cover that we have on one of our ipads upstairs come flying off of it and land onto the ground i immediately hopped up ran out the door and said nope we're finishing this tour outside <laughs> that's enough for me wow wow <laughs> um so do you do you ask yourself, like, is there any other explanation than Peter? Um... Um, I try every once in a while. Like, so we have an AC system down there. So generally with the cold sensations, I'm like, okay, it's just the AC taking on. It's just the AC taking on. Um, and we're near a bunch of residential houses, too. So if I'm on the top of the lighthouse, I smell smoke. I'm like, okay, maybe somebody's smoking in their backyard. Um, maybe there's a campfire. It's just like a lingering scent. And I always try to brush it off. But there was a time that I've done this, and my, my supervisor has actually done this too, where we have both taken EMF meters, um, and we have measured Peter from the ground to the top of his height and known that he has been in the basement with us. Huh. Yes. Yeah. And how tall is he? He's, he's, so I'm about five six, and he's he's a little bit taller than I am. Okay. Wow. Uh, Matt, I. I so what one, do you? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, one of the questions I had is, what happened to the original lighthouse? Was it like hurricane or something? 
So the original lighthouse was first marked as a Spanish watchtower in the 1500s, and it was kind of built up and burned down and built up and burned down. It was controlled by the Spanish and then the British and then the Spanish and the British because St. Augustine has a very long history. Right. Um, but eventually they built it out of coquina and wood, um, which coquina is a very durable stu- substance. It's a natural substance for Florida. Um, and the fort downtown in St. Augustine is actually built out of it. Um, and one of their favorite stories to tell is the fort was being bombed for days and days and days during one of the um, crusades that was attempted. Uh, and no matter how many times they did it, they were not able to tear down that fort because of how durable coquina is. Hmm. Um, now, that lighthouse was actually run by some Menorcans. Uh, which actually kind of leads us into our next ghost story. Uh, but with that lighthouse, it did actually end up collapsing into the ocean in the in 1800 or 1880 to be exact, uh, because it was damaged after the Civil War and it just, the shoreline was getting a lot closer. So eventually it just collapsed. But the original foundation, um, we can still see to this day during low tide. Hmm. Interesting. So is the, uh, I, I guess, is it operational still, or is it uh, just... Uh, the old, um, so our lighthouse, yes, the old one, no. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the, the new one, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be a little tough for the old one. <laughs> um, most light, oh, for sure. Um, most lighthouses in the United States are still operational. Um, they still are used as an activated navigation to this day. A lot of people ask us why, like, aren't systems, GPS, and all that on shit's updated? And it's like, yes, but what happens if that were to go out? Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of boats are still equipped with a catalog of what our lighthouses look like at, um, during the day and at night. So our day mark is that black and white stripe with a red top. And our night mark is that we have um, a first order Fresnel lens that has three beams that go out and they look like a flash at sea every 30 seconds. Oh, cool. So there's no creepy lighthouse keeper still or it's all automated? Oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> we make the joke that our former head of safety, who just retired, I mean, I call him my creepy lighthouse keeper sometimes, <laughs> but he just retired, so I can't do that anymore. Um, we have what we call a lamp lighter now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's somebody who lives nearby that if something were to happen at night, an alarm were to go off, a light needed to be replaced, they can easily come in and have access to it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's generally our head of maintenance. Ah, okay. Hmm. Um, so... How many sightings would you say, or not sightings, but like how many encounters would you say happen on a monthly basis there? Um, so it's hard to tell mm-hmm. because sometimes our spirits are more active around certain dates um, that are very prominent to them. Right. And sometimes nothing happens. So I would say this month so far, we have had an enormous amount of things happening. We have had, like I said, the iPad cover flying off for me. We had an accordion that was knocked off of a chair and onto the floor. The other night, we had a lock in the basement in Peter's room swinging back and forth, and when somebody went to grab it and stop it, it started back up again. Wow. Um, But there are some nights where we don't get anything. Like, people will be like, well, why aren't the ghosts coming out? (laughs) They're not on payroll. They're not on payroll. They show up when they want to. Like... I have to be here. They don't. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So uh, where are they? Um, you know, like when they're not being active, are they still there and just like hiding or uh, what, you know, where do they go? Or Well, Pe- so we know that Peter comes out during the day. Um, Peter for sure comes out because we get that cherry pipe tobacco scent. And one of our favorite ghost stories is about one of our spirits that came out during the day, and her name is Maria. She was the one who was originally um, associated with the old lighthouse. Her husband was the lighthouse keeper at the time. Um, But in 1859, while he was painting the lighthouse white, um, his scaffolding uh, snapped and he fell to his death, uh, breaking his back on top of an oil room, ricocheting off of that and snapping his neck on a wall. Which is... A lot of detail, right? <laughs> yeah. We have all that information because it was reported in his obituary. Uh, um, 
which we do believe his wife Maria kind of took over and, and said and she unfortunately witnessed the event. Um, so rumor has it on the night of her husband's death, she runs to the top of the lighthouse and shouts out into the wind, you know, what shall I do? And she claims she heard her husband's voice respond and say, Tim's the light. Um, she actually went on to become one of St. Augustine's uh, first, if not the first, female lightkeeper. She was one of the first for the state of Florida and the first Hispanic American woman appointed to a U.S. lighthouse station recognized by the U.S. Coast Guard. Mm. Um so she did a great job. She took care of that lighthouse up until about the Civil War, but she's returned to us as one of our spirits, even though she died up in Georgia and was buried in Jacksonville. And our favorite story that we tell with her, again, happened during the day, and that we have nature trails that people can access. They're not really long. They're about a quarter of a mile during the day. They're fairly easy to navigate. I tell people, I'm like, you either make a left or you make a right, and you'll easily find your way out. Um, but we had a woman who could not figure out how to get out of the nature trail. She was out there for like 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> but when she found her, I was like, I don't know. I, like every time I hear it, I'm like, how is that possible? There's no way. Like I get it at night, but not during the day. Um, but she came into the gift shop and she approached our employee, Joyce, who's, who still worked there. I work with Joyce like a couple days out of the week. And she swears by this story every day. And she said, a woman came up to her and said, I loved your reenactor. She had the most gorgeous dress, beautiful hair, knew so much about lighthouses, was so helpful. Whatever you guys are paying her, you need to double it. But the one thing I thought that was really weird was she kept referring to this lighthouse as the new lighthouse. But isn't it almost 150 years old? Mm. So Joyce just kind of looked at this woman because we don't have reading. We, we do not have anybody dressed up in costume pieces, anything like that. And we sure would not put them out in the woods in Victorian era clothing <laughs> during the Florida summer heat. That would be completely inhumane. And so Joyce just kind of looked at her and goes, yep, that's Maria. We love her. Hmm. So Maria does have a tendency to come out during the day. Um, as for other spirits, uh, we do occasionally get wet child-sized footprints that show up in our lighthouse overnight, and then they won't go away until later on in the day. So we know that that kind of happens, um, but we don't really have our little girls active during the day, and our uh, one of our other lighthouse keepers, Major Harm, is not really ha active during the day. Hmm. So what does your husband say when you tell these stories to him? Um, he just kind of makes a joke. He's like, oh, don't bring anything home. I don't want you to bring anything home. <laughs> but my favorite thing is he also takes advantage of it. And um, I love him to death, but he's very much an introvert. And out of the two of us, I'm the more social one. So anytime he has to go somewhere, like to his hair appointment, he's been seeing the same woman since he was a teenager. She loves to talk about ghosts, and he just, like, brings me with him, and he's like, here, you can talk to her. <laughs> so, but he, he just, he's like, don't bring anything home, don't do this, like, don't get possessed. I'm like, nothing, it's not going to happen. <laughs> don't get possessed. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if Maria's able to travel or, you know, it's like, I mean, have you ever thought about, like, they might come home with you or they might be in the car with you right now? Or So we have never actually had reports of any of our spirits leaving our property. Um, if anything came home with me, I would think I would be a little unnerved. Um, but I don't have any reports of them leaving property. Uh, now, they do. We do have neighbors around us, so our girls, um, our three little girls, do like to play in our neighbor's yards and at the park across the street. I think our spirits just kind of like to hang out to the land that they're comfortable with. Mm. And and so the the little girls, are, they they were the ones that died there. Yes, they they were the ones who. This is it's the hardest story that we have to tell. Um, I, like I said, I've been doing these tours for about two and a half years, and anytime I have to tell that story, I do generally get choked up or I get chills down my legs. Um, 
they moved down, uh, three, three little girls moved down with their dad, Hezekiah Pitty, who was the head of construction of our lighthouse. They moved down in about 1872 when their names are Mary. She was 15, Eliza was 13, and Carrie was four. Um, and Hezekiah knew that, that moving his daughters to a construction site was one of the most dangerous things he could do. So he told his kids, you can play wherever you want. Do not play on the construction site at all. But kids being kids got told, hey, don't do this. And they said, hey, we're going to do it anyway. Mm. And they played all over the construction site. Uh, but their favorite thing to play on was the tramway system that they used to transport all the bricks from the shoreline to the construction site. But going from, like, the construction site to the shoreline was like a Victorian-era roller coaster. So they would hop in this cart, start going down the track. Um, once they would make it close to the end, they would pull a brake, and then it would come to a stop. And one day they were playing with another little girl on property. Um, we believe she's the daughter of one of our construction workers, a little African-American girl about 11 years old by the name of Ellie. So Mary, Eliza, Ellie, and Carrie were all playing together, and they noticed that one of the tramway carts wasn't in use for the day, and they thought this is the perfect opportunity. All four of them hopped in the cart, started going down the track, and once they knew that they were making it close to the end, they went to pull the brake and realized why the cart was not in use for the day. Mm. The brake didn't work. So it made it to the very end, flipping them out into the water, trapping them underneath. Um, there's a gentleman nearby by the name of Daniel Sessions who had witnessed what had occurred, immediately ran over, tried to save as many of them as he could that day. Um, but only one of them made it out alive, and that was Carrie, the youngest daughter, at four years old. Wow. So it's a very hard story that we have to tell. It's the first tragedy ever associated with our current lighthouse. It was the first, one of the first biggest tragedies. I wouldn't say in San... Not, sorry, I wouldn't say it's the biggest because there were much bigger tragedies in St. Augustine, but it was one of the first biggest ones um, in St. Augustine at the time. Uh, and one of the things I like to tell people is the entire city shut down for a month and construction stopped for a month to help the families mourn the losses of their daughters. Wow. Um, and so generally when we tell this story, people do have a tendency to think with the girls there's a heaviness um very much a sadness one of my co-workers kind of likes to say oh you might like picture the little girl from the rain like crawling out of the well um but it's actually the complete opposite our girls are the most playful spirits we have on property the most active spirits that we have on property they're the ones i personally get the most activity from and i've seen them in the lighthouse before and they're the ones who leave those wet child size footprints. Uh, I can send you guys a picture of those to use for reference. Uh, but we often have these footprints show up. I took a picture once at 7.30 at night, and they didn't disappear until 11.30 a.m. the next day. Wow. And no matter how hard we try to wipe away at them, they will not budge. Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Do you have people that, um, you know, are skeptics when they come there and then they leave with a, a changed perspective because of what they experience? 100%, yes. Um, I uh, had a girl come on one of my tours once, and she was there with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend was like, I don't believe in any of this stuff. Like he just wanted to talk to my other coworker about baseball and you know, all these other things while I took her into a, a different area. Cause when we brought her into one of the rooms, she felt very drawn to the lens that would have been in the original lighthouse that Maria took care of. Um, now when we see Maria, she is generally our woman in white. So she's in a long white dress with long black hair off to the side. And this young lady that night was wearing a long white dress with black hair. Mm. And as we are in this room, she goes and she stands by the lens and she's just like, I just feel this overwhelming sense of grief. She's like, I don't know what it is in regards to this, but I just, I feel sad and I feel like there's some kind of closure that's needed. Um, and as we're standing there, she turns around and leans up against the wall and she's staring at her reflection um, in a glass door across from her. When she runs her fingers through her hair, she sees that her reflection doesn't. 
And so she sprinted out of the room and goes <laughs> all the way down to her boyfriend. And I'm walking behind her. And her boyfriend ended up looking at my coworker. And he's like, you know, I've been to a lot of these things. I'm very much a skeptic when it comes to this. He goes, but I've never seen her freaked out. So something had to have happened. Hmm. So we do get a lot of people who say, you know, I didn't believe in any of this. And sometimes that's who our ghosts tend to target or the people who are like, oh, this doesn't exist. Or, or the people who try to be very macho, like, I'm not scared. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> so. Wow. So, okay, um, what type of programs do you offer? Are there different packages, or can you spend the night there investigating, or what do you yeah. have to offer? So, for people who aren't really interested in the ghosts and the paranormal, we do have a daytime admission that we offer um, every day of the year, except for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Um, and that's generally, you get to go around the grounds, climb the lighthouse, check out all the exhibits. Now, for nighttime, uh, for those, again, not interested in ghosts, we have a few other opportunities. We have a night, uh, an after hours climb. We do an event called Sunset Moonrise, which is on the full moon every month. But for people who are interested in the ghosts, we do have quite a few options. Um, now we do our ghost tales tour, which is a just one hour tour of just the stories that we do during the week, but our dark of the moon ghost tour, we do all year long. So every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with some extended hours during, um, busier seasons, it's a two hour tour. People get to listen to the stories for the first portion and the second portion, they can go around the grounds, um, climb the lighthouse and do their own investigating because we allow people to bring equipment. Uh, we also rent out um, EMF meters for an additional cost. The only thing we don't allow is obviously Ouija boards because there's a whole thing with that if you don't close them properly. Hmm. Um, now for people okay. who... Have... So what do you mean yeah. by that? That's like piqued my curiosity. Yes, so we do not allow Ouija boards because Ouija boards, you don't necessarily know who you're talking to. Um, with those, you are essentially just sending out a, hey, I'm here, come speak to me. Whatever is on the other side, please come over, which could be something completely fine and friendly, or it could be anything aggressive, harmful, demonic. Um, so we do not allow those. And then if somebody is using one and they don't know how to close it out properly, because theoretically when you close it out, whatever you are talking to should lead back over to the other side. Um, if they're not closed out properly, it then creates issues um, within that area that they're at. So we do not want to potentially risk having something come over that could start harming us as tour guides or harming our guests or cause issues mm. or even mess with our spirits that we currently have. So we do not allow Ouija boards. Okay, that's good to know. Yes. <laughs> I never recommend using them. I, it's one of those, you just, you don't know what you're going to get. And it could be, it could be fine. It could be you're trying to reach out to the person that you want to talk to and that's great. Or it could be something that is pretending to be who you want to talk to, which is not great. So we, anytime we see those, we say, hey, you, you got to put that away. Okay. Um, but a few other tour options we have, um, for people who have already heard our stories, we do investigation-only tours where people get three hours just to kind of investigate our grounds. Um, and then we also have private tour options. So if anybody's ever wanting to bring a group to the lighthouse and do some investigating, or if you own a company and you want to have an event there, or if you just kind of want to do a private event because you have a large group or you do want to do a birthday party or something like that, we can rent out the site for that. Um, and it comes with the staff members on site. And we can either do the tour for you and the investigating. You can just do the investigating. Um, and it does include, you can't necessarily spend the night, but if you happen to book the tour overnight, uh, we'll let you hang out there overnight. So have you had any weddings there? Can people get married there? 
Yes, actually, we do have weddings. Um, we do everything from elopements to um, a little bit larger of a wedding. I actually worked an elopement about two weekends ago. Very sweet couple. Um, and we also do um, medium size to a little bit larger weddings. We don't have receptions there, but we do have ceremonies being held. Interesting. So, um, you know, do any things happen during the wedding? Like... Not that I am aware of. Uh, I have personally never heard of anything happening. I like to think that our ghosts might like to just kind of sit, especially the girls. I like to think that they might kind of sit there and just be like, oh, my gosh, like, look what's happening. Um, but we've never actually heard of any of our spirits, like, interfering with any weddings or anything. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if they showed up in the wedding photo or something. <laughs> you know? Oh, I think that would be great. I'd be like, oh, look, you got bonus guests for free. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Matt, uh, I'm going to have to turn it back to you. This is uh, yeah, a lot to begin. It's really interesting. Um, have yeah. you, have <laughs> you, so aside from the lighthouse, have you had any other encounters? I mean, like, have you run into? That her high school one. Well, yeah, aside from that one. Aside from that one, not necessarily. Uh, we do like to think that there is a little bit of a sensitivity that runs in my family. Mm -hmm. I have personally not gone anywhere else yet to investigate. I had a group once that came through that was like, hey, yeah, if you want to go with us to, like, the Devil's Chair in Casadega, we'd love for you to. And I'm like, unfortunately, I work Friday, Saturday night, so I don't have time to go out when a lot of people are doing these investigation options. Right. Um, I would love to go out more and investigate a few areas and see what I can pick up on. There are times, though, that I do go places and I'm like, something doesn't necessarily feel right. Because mm -hmm. um, that's generally what I get is I get like a feeling of like, okay, something, something's in here. Um, so I do get those feelings on occasion, uh, but I have not been able to actually go out and do my own investigating anywhere yet. Do you think people need to be sort of in tune with... Um... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like they, they're more susceptible to being contacted by, a, you know, or having a, an experience than someone who's not. I think the more open you are towards it, then yes. Um, especially when it comes to our grounds. I think if you're very closed off and you want nothing to do with it and you're like my husband who's like, oh, just like makes jokes about it. Yeah. I don't necessarily think so. Um, now, if you're like some of our guests and you start antagonizing some of our spirits, at that point, I think you're asking for it. Um, <laughs> but... I, mean, I think if the more open to it you are, the more likely you are to have these experiences. Yeah, I mean, what do they do to antagonize them? Just go around going, "Ooh, little girl." <laughs> so we we did have a we we do have Peter's one of those who does not like to be antagonized. Yeah. Um, and we had a gentleman. It's actually you can look up the YouTube video. His name is Baron Corbin. He's a wrestler, mm -hmm. or was a wrestler. Um, he came on one of our tours, uh, and I can send you the link to this too. And he sat in the basement and sat in Peter's chairs and said, all right, Peter, if you don't make my EMF meter spike, I'm going to take your chairs, throw them in the back of my pickup truck, and they're going to fly out on the side of the road and get smashed. <laughs> well, Peter wasn't fond of that, and he started to shake the chair on this gentleman as if to say, get out. Mm. Um and I did recently have a group come through that they have also put out a YouTube video, but they, I gave them the stories beforehand. I was like, Hey, read over this. And we had gone into the basement and it's this, they're, they're younger guys. And he looks at me and I'm talking about Peter and he goes, Oh, that's the grumpy guy. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, you need to apologize right <laughs> now. And he was like, what? I'm like, you need to apologize right now. And he goes, Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And then later on, um, and you can actually catch this in their video, he comes running out of the basement and comes out to us. And he's like, I heard shuffling behind me. And I heard the words, get out. Wow. And I was like, well, yeah, because you called Peter a grumpy old man. Like, he's not going to be happy about that. So we, we do have, it's primarily the gentlemen who come in our groups and our tours who think they're all tough and are like, oh. 
like calling Peter these nasty names, just trying to get a rise out of him. Yeah. Um, and we, we never condone that. I always tell people, I'm like, you have to understand, like, you got to be respectful of them because this was their house before it was ours. This was their land before it was ours and their city before it was ours. Right. What's the uh, scariest thing that's happened there? I mean, I know there's a lot of different things. Um, like, what, what has uh, one of your guests reported to you that you think is the scariest thing? Um, generally, for me, it's anything that happens to me. But yeah. I will say, I, had one, I have another tour guide. She's another girl that I manage with. Um, her name is Sammy. She's been working there much longer than I have. She's great. She has had all sorts of experiences in the White House. Um, but we actually, she had a woman who she sat in the basement one night and she sat them in Peter's chairs while she went into another room. And she said she had a girl call out from the other room and go, who's Peter? Mm. And she's like, okay, well, she's heard the stories before and they continue on. And she was like, okay, something just whispered in my ear. And she continued on. She was something is touching my leg now. And my my coworker was like, after I would have heard the words like "Who's Peter?" <laughs> said or like or, or it's like "I'm Peter." Said to me, she's like, I would have been out. Yeah. But I mean, she has had everything from her and I get a lot of activity together. We have had shadows peeking out of us. We have had a woman gasp in our ear in the White House when we've been the only people in there. Um, we have had shadowy figures shot or like voices come out of the basement towards us mm -hmm. we have seen figures uh she gets a lot of interaction from maria which i don't mine is primarily the girls mm -hmm. um but she's gotten a hand a finger run up the side of her neck she's seen a shadowy hand go down railings all sorts of stuff huh. why do you think is why do you think um certain ghosts are more attracted towards you like you said the girls are more interacted with you than they are with the other one why do you think that is so i think our spirits like to play favorites um they, they generally uh we each have a story that we tell and i won't lie for me the girls the girls is one of my favorite stories i it's such a tragedy but it's got such a spin on it where they're here they're happy they don't have an adult telling them what to do right. um we found out this year too that like carrie went on to live a very healthy life and have kids of her own um so it's one of those stories that seems like it's very grim because it's kids being kids but turns into this like very positive thing mm -hmm. and i think because they love to mess with people and they love to play play pranks on people and because I'm so easily scared, I'm such an easy target for them <laughs> that they love to be like, all right, what can we do to mess with her today, girls? <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, Kat, we're going to uh, we're gonna let Abby go here in a few minutes, but you got time for one more question. So do you anticipate, like, at some point that, you might have um, these encounters, you know, elsewhere. Um, are you open to that? For sure. Um, I, I definitely would love to start doing, like, my own investigating and things like that. I personally would love to, like, go out with all these groups that do things. Like, I, so I love the ghost hunters, specifically Amy Bruni. She is amazing. Um, and she comes to our lighthouse, or she used to come every year through her own company that she has called Strange Estates, where they actually go out and you can do investigating with a lot of different people from the paranormal community. And I would love to do one of those one day to start really getting my foot into this and like kind of opening up and being more aware of all these different spirits and things like that. I don't want to make like a full profession out of it, but I would love to do it like in my free time. So I would say for sure, I do want to get out there. I do want to investigate it. I do want to be more open to spirits. I just got to find the actual time to do it. And do you get a sense that the spirits are, um, you know, happy coexisting with, um, you know, the humans that are alive right now? Um, I mean, are they lonely and, and they're happy that somebody is there or... Uh, do they like just associate with each other when you're not, when people are not there, living people or I don't know. 
I mean, I like I'm, to think so. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like to think so because I think there's a different reason why each of our spirits came back. I think Maria came back to uphold that promise of tending the light in the afterlife. I like to think Peter came back because his wife might still be there. Um, and because it, he spent such a huge chunk of his life there. I think the girls came back because they can still play and they can still mess with people and they're like, there's no adult to tell them what to do. And two of our other spirits who are Major Harn and Kate Harn, they were our first, our, our second lighthouse keepers, but our first to live in the keeper's house. Major Harn passed away in the house of tuberculosis, but I think he stayed because there's such fond memories. Like his sixth daughter was born there. Like he got to watch his kids grow up and Kate came back because that's where her husband was. So I think she's watching over him in the afterlife. So I do like to think all these spirits are kind of keeping each other company and then spending time together and maybe kind of become like a little bit of a dysfunctional family in the afterlife and, and kind of get to relax and do things that they love doing outside of guests being there. Has this changed? And I guess this will be my last question for you. I mean, it's a fascinating topic. We could go on and on. But has this changed your view about um, what happens when you die? And also, um, you know, what's the explanation for why some um, people or spirits come back and some seem not to? So it's... Yes and no hasn't changed my perspective. I generally always believe that there that there's something after death. I've just never quite known what it was. And I think having these interactions with spirits confirm that, you know, even if you don't necessarily go somewhere after death, you are still, you, you, you kind of linger. Or even if you're just lingering through different periods of history, um, just kind of repeating itself, I do believe that there's an essence of you still there. Um, now... What was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, like, why do some some spirits come back and, you know, some people seem to just die and we don't see them or hear from them again? And I think, so with some of that, too, I think some of it's a sense of closure um, and getting to move on. Uh, but I know, like, my supervisor loves, again, has the idea of, like, your essence is lingering and you're just kind of, like, overlapping with times in history and it's still kind of repeating itself. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I believe there's also a sense of closure. Like, I won't lie. I, I recently lost my father-in-law in July. Um, he passed away very quickly. And I know my husband, we, we have his ashes in our house, and I was very hesitant of that and I was like okay well what if his his spirits attached to this like what is that going to bring into this house but my husband you know shortly after he passed away said his father-in-law came to him in a dream and was like it's okay like you're gonna be okay and I think that was a sense of closure that needed to happen that it's one of those things we're not necessarily needing or I'm not necessarily needing to worry that his spirit is going to be like attaching to our house Fair enough. That's, um, as I said, it's a very interesting topic, and um, we really appreciate you coming and sharing about the lighthouse and, you know, all the experiences that you've had and others. Um, we would love to see some of those photos that you mentioned. If you, you know, we would share those with our um, listeners if you would like to pass those along. Absolutely. I can definitely email those to you guys. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope that uh, you know, you're not working on Halloween. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, I will be. I will be doing it in costume. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully it's a quiet night for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. All good? Yeah. We're good. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, you can send those to cat at iwritepleas at outlook.com, or you can write to me at backstorysessions at gmail.com, or matt at level11ventures.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.